Hello, Fellowship family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Jennifer, and here are some announcements. Our premiere opening of the Kingsville Christian Fellowship is this Saturday, the 10th. Please make plans to join us beginning at 10 a.m. at our new campus. Enjoy exploring our new campus. Enjoy great fellowship, and you can also expect great food. Come and be a part of this great new work that the Lord has established. The Food Pantry team will be serving our CCCF families and any family living in the 7412, the 7413, and the 7414 zip code areas on Saturday, September the 10th, from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. If you are in need of food, please feel free to come out. Our TFI team recently returned from Indonesia where God did amazing things, and we want you to hear all about it. Join us Sunday, September the 11th for Global Impact at 6 p.m. Pastor Don's desire is that all of us participate in one of our great fellowship connection groups. Please visit our website to learn more about them and join one today. Thank you for your attention, and now we will enter into our wonderful worship service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Hello, good evening, everybody. So good to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming in, and I appreciate you so very, very much. And we're starting our service. We want to welcome our internet audience, our brothers and sisters from around the world. Those of you who are in Asia, thank you so much for joining us in Africa and Europe here in North America, Central America, South America, Australia, and the islands of the sea. We bless you in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pant my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God. Uh, I trust that our souls are thirsting for God, and that's why we are here today. So we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ again and again and again. For there's no other name given whereby we might bless somebody, that is, bestow upon them divine favor. Isn't that what blessing is? It's like speaking divine favor over you and into you. Yeah, it's not just some kind of a thing we just say and do. Bless you, uh, bless you, and bless you, and bless you. So uh, we're going to pray, and uh, Reverend James Roots is in the house, and we're going to be leading us in praise and worship tonight. And um, the psalmist also says, and it has become one of my favorite scriptures. And uh, how many of you know what I'm going to say? One of my favorite. Well, I was glad. Who said that? I was glad when they said unto me, not unto you, unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then I'm going to talk to the person who was saying that and said, my feet have been standing within your gates of Jerusalem. I was prepared for him. Yes, in Jesus' name. Reverend James Roos, well, let's, let's do it. We bless you and bless this you. amazing team. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. It's time. It's time to enter into his presence. It's time to enter into his gates of thanksgiving. Are you ready, church? Here we go. Here we go. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing is impossible Oh yeah Here we go, come on church Gonna live by what I see. 
church, how many of y'all believe? We're going to sing it loud. Come on, I want to hear you above everything else. Here we go. Come on. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. You sing. Come on. Yes, we do. I believe, I believe. Come on, sing it again. Here we go now. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. You say, come on. Say, through you, blind eyes are open. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. Yes, I do. Sing it again. Here we go. Come on. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. Yeah, come on. We believe in you, Lord. We know that all things are possible through you, Father God through your son Jesus and the work on the cross. Amen. Come on now. Because we know that in his name we can move mountains. Highways are carved out through the seas. There's nothing impossible for you tonight, Lord. You can do the same in our lives. We open up to you and what you're going to do. Come on, church. Here we go. Well, there's a name that levels mountains and calls out highways through the seas. And I've seen its power unravel vibes right in front of me. Yeah. Come on, I want to hear you sing. There's a faith that stands defiant. Here we go. Sing. Well, there's a faith that stands since Goliath, come on. It's since Goliath. Yes, it does say. I've seen his praise unravel shackles right off my feet. Because that's the power of your name. Here we go. Well, that's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall and strongholds break and there is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the rain. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Here we go. There's a hope that calls out courage. Come on, church, here we go. Sing. There's a hope that calls out courage. In the furnace unafraid. The kind of daring expectation that every prayer I make is on an empty grave. Well, that's the power of our Lord name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall and strongholds break. There is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. I believe, I believe. 
come on, I see you taking ground. I see you taking ground. I see you press ahead. Your power is dangerous to the enemy's camp. Yes, it is. You still do miracles. You sing. For your love. Come on, your spirit's breaking out. Here we go. Your spirit's breaking out. Your kingdom moving in. Your victory claims the ground that the enemy had. I know it does. You still do miracles. You will do what you said. For your love. no power like the power of Jesus it's just to call on his name mountains are moved oceans are split in half so Father we know that you're still taking ground you're still pressing in moving ahead we thank you Lord Come on, let's sing that now. I see you taking ground. I see you taking ground. I see you press ahead. Your power is dangerous to the enemy's camp. Yes, it is. You still do miracles. You will do. Come on. For your. Come on. Come on. Your spirit. Your spirit's breaking out, your kingdom moving in, your victory claims the crown that the enemy had. Yes, it did now. You still do miracles. You will do what you said, for you're the same God now as you always have. That's the power of your name, just a mention. you to give him some praise if you believe that today i want you to give him some praise we thank you lord hallelujah there's no power like the power of jesus come on church there's no power like the power of jesus come on there's no power like the power of Jesus, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess the name of Jesus, I believe, I believe, I believe, yeah, hallelujah, you're so good, Lord.
Jesus. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. the 
stay right there for a second. You deserve the glory. You deserve it all. You deserve the glory. Oh, Jesus. You deserve the glory. Yes, Lord, we open up our hearts to you. We receive, we receive what you're doing for us and in us and through us. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, because you are the God of dominion and might and power. You reign over all the heavens. In fact, you reign above the heavens. And you are mighty in power, Lord. You are, you are mighty to save. The Bible tells us that you save from the utter, or to the uttermost. Lord, thank you so much that you are the God of power. The power that you have told the disciples. You said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And then you turned around and gave it to us by the Holy Spirit or through the Holy Spirit. You gave it to us. Lord, I am so grateful to you and how you've created us to be people of force and power. To be people to advance not to be people who quake and are mousy, but we advance the kingdom of God. We go forward. We don't go back. We go forward because we belong to an army unlike anything that this world system has ever known. The army of the Lord who are equipped to do the work of the Lord to bring glory to the Lord. Lord, I thank you so much. I thank you so much because you're wonderful in all your ways. Your, your mercy, the Bible says, your mercy is in the heavens. And your faithfulness reaches the clouds. That's beyond our understanding. That's beyond our understanding. Lord, I am so grateful to you. Because we are different from all the peoples of the earth we've been taught. But we have, we're different because we have an audience with you. We can call unto you and you answer. You're a breath away. You're a thought away. Jesus! And you're there. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's why we are confident tonight. Because you're raising up this army. No, you wrote, you, the army's has risen and is marching and we want to line up and go the way that we want to we want to finish everything that you've laid before us we want to fulfill the purposes of God Lord the graveyard is is a place of unfulfilled purposes unfulfilled places where unfulfilled visions and dreams Lord we don't want that to end up for us we want to go forward we want to go forward and fulfill that which you've called us to do. Lord, I'm praying from this position. We're praying for the Chapa family. That you would bring comfort and peace to this family. Knowing that you grant that to those who are afflicted, the Bible says. That you bring comfort to those who are afflicted. Lord, let the, let the peace of God that passes all understanding guard their heart and mind. Lord, I pray also for Anthony. Uh, that he was promised a job today for when he heals. Lord, heal this man. Heal him completely. Restore him completely. Uh, 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 body, soul, and mind. Lord, heal him. Lord, I, I pray in Jesus' name that we can trust you because, uh, uh, because of who you are and what you've done in us. We are a people with history. We have history with you. We've called and you've answered. We've sought and we have found. We've knocked on heaven's door and you answered. And so we're praying for Anthony that you would heal him. But this job that you have given him, Lord, I'm praying that it would be full-time work with benefits. And give him the opportunity to move into management because that's what we are. We are people with the favor of God. You have given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And so, Father, I pray for Anthony. Woo, that you would do that for him. I also pray for Mr. Foster, who's in the hospital. I pray that you would completely heal him of his low blood pressure and his high blood pressure. Let him live and not die, but proclaim the works of God. 
Bless him and his family and Deborah and his family. Bless them, I pray in Jesus' name. We want to pray for Henry. The doctors say there's nothing else that they can do. What a wonderful position to be in. Because God is able, not able to just make grace abound to us, but he's able to heal and restore and make well. And we pray for Henry that not that you wouldn't move the blockage, but that you would remove the blockage. It would be a, a, away from him. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because our prayers are not predicated on what we say. They are not predicated on how we say it. They are predicated on your name. We, we, we sang about your name. They're predicated on your name. And this is what Paul said. He had an understanding and he said that your every knee in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth will bow. That means sickness has to bow. That's why we're not afraid to pray. We're, you, we, it doesn't matter who we're praying for. We believe that you would heal and restore. And this is why we pray for Dr. Janelle, that you would continue to heal her and restore her. And Brother Luis, that you would continue to and heal and restore her. That we would see Jasmine hop and skip as she raises up out of that bed, that sick bed in Jesus' name. And that you would bring great comfort to Brother Rufino, that you would embrace him and he would feel the very presence of God. And we pray for Pakistan, that you would, that you, you would cause the floods to dry up, that there would be no more rain. And, and I thank you for this great opportunity that you have given us to give towards Pakistan. Let the church arise. Not let the church float away with the floods, but let the church arise in Pakistan. And I pray, Father, for the drought that's going on in the Midwest, that you would bring great rain, a gentle rain, a healing rain, but bring great rain over there. And I pray for this war going on in the Ukraine. I agree with my senior pastor that you would bring uh, 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 like storms and like you did for the six day war of, of the Jews and, and that you caused a great dust storm and, and they were lost in that dust storm and didn't know what to do and you allowed the weaker enemy to overcome the Goliath, the evil enemy and I pray that you would do that for the Ukraine Lord. We've seen you do it in times past and you're not a God that you should lie neither are you the son of God that you should repent. Have you not said it? Will you not do it? Have you not spoken it? And will it not come to pass? And so we pray for everyone in this room that have come today. Let them not leave the same way that they've come in. Let them leave different and change and challenge. Restore uh, broken hearts and mend uh, uh, broken minds that feel like there's no hope. This is the end. I don't know what to do. No, no, no. Not in this house. We're not in the house of God. Not in the house of prayer. We're praying for them that you would make them well. But fulfill the promise that you have given us that everyone who comes into this house will not leave the same way that they've come in. Let them leave restored, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. That it spreads no further. Let it be known to you all and to the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you whole. In Acts 4, 1 through 22, we find the account of a lame man who had been healed by Peter and John. This healing created quite a stir among the leadership, the Sanhedrin, in Jerusalem. Peter and John were arrested and jailed for this good deed. The Sanhedrin, the ruling Jewish council, was greatly disturbed that Peter and John taught the people and preached in Jesus' name. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes were gathered together at Jerusalem. The council brought the apostles out of jail to question them. They asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all 
and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you whole. Peter continued his message and said, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Peter was emphatic in his defense of the gospel. He did not yield for a minute to their threats. We also must not yield when standing for righteousness. Let us resolve this within ourselves. The Sanhedrin had one aim, one goal, to stop the progress, preaching, and effectiveness of the name Jesus. Today, religious leaders, the media, and many so-called intellectuals desire to discredit the name Jesus so that it is only thought of as fictitious. The Sanhedrin said, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all. And we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Much of what is going on in the world is an effort to stop the name of Jesus from being published or made known. Our responsibility is to never let that happen. The disciples, their wives and children lived in jeopardy every hour. They did not count their lives dear. The most important purpose of their lives was to be faithful to the cause of Christ. I believe this is the only way in which one should live. He is worthy of our lives. Pastor Don. For you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory. You are worthy, you are worthy of it all. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy of it all. Glory to his name. Amen, amen. Amen, thank you all. You know what? I still believe that James Roots has the best mic in the house. He, he always sounds evangelistic, but anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. Well, welcome everyone. I, I hope you're as blessed as I am. I'm real excited. I hope you will be too, But because uh, the best is yet to come. We haven't heard the word yet, amen. Well, I'm here to, uh, what am I here to do? I'm here to release the youth, yeah. <laughs> Let's release the youth, please. Now, as they go, before they go, wait a minute, before you turn it up and crank it up and rip the knob off, when they go, let's just lay, or let's uh, point our hands to them and, and, and agree with me as we bless them before they go. That's our future. Those are the people that are going to carry the gospel, amen? So let's release the youth, amen. All right, praise the Lord. Let's just, let's just uh, point the, our hands toward the doors. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that they would lay hold of the gospel, lay hold of Jesus Christ, that they would forever be changed, that these young people would rise up and, uh, and get a greater understanding, give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and allow them to know that they're called of God to do the works of God, to bring glory to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thank you so much.
Hallelujah. I'm also up here to uh, welcome the guests. If you're here for the very first time, we want to welcome you to the Corpus Christi Christian Fellowship. Uh, would you raise your hand and let us know that this is the very first time you, you've come? We want to be a blessing to you. As, I don't see anybody. Okay. You, so help me. Help me. I lost my glasses. Okay. I can't see that far. <laughs> Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. We're family. Yeah. You don't want to just leave your gases on top of the gas tank and drive off. It's just anyway. So anyway. So let's uh, this is what I want you to do before we shake a hand, give a fist bump or bump elbows. I want you to get up. OK, I want you to get up, cross the aisles and say hello to somebody. Tell them they look good in the house of God. Tell them tell them to expect God to do something for them tonight. Don't be afraid. Please don't sit down. Get up and mingle. Amen. Thank you. See, I believe that this is how it's going to be in heaven. We're all going to say hello to everybody. We're going to talk about what God did and how he did it and how he delivered. This is, this is wonderful. I don't know about you, but I miss this. I mean, 2020 and 2021, we barely were doing elbows and, you know, shoulder, shoulder punches and all that other. But not anymore. So praise the Lord. Anyway, so now it's time to receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap for Jesus. You're not clapping for the tithe or the offering. You want to clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, uh, if anyone is needing an offering envelope, if you would, please raise your hand and what will, be, will be provided for you. Amen. Don't uh, forget, we're still uh, taking on offering for Pakistan and the floods over there. We want to be a blessing to them. Yes. Sir. And please, Pastor Lavelle said, we want to thank you for what you have given thus far. All right. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. It was really powerful. That means it's really a lot. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to claim the scripture that we've always claimed here at the fellowship. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Well, hallelujah. Let me pray because we're ready to receive. Father, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to give, for an expression of worship, knowing that you're, you're not limited by what we say or how we say it because there's no limits in Christ and we are your children. And there's no limits in us for what we can do. Bless this offering. I pray that it would continue to travel and go throughout the whole world, proclaiming Jesus is God. Bless the house. Bless the people of God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Thank you, Sister Amy. I didn't know whether to trespass or if I were trespassing you. Thank you so very much. Really appreciate it. Yes. I, I was thinking when, as you were playing and I, it was coming up and I heard some applause, I was, it was, I think it was Bishop Adolfo said uh, that whenever we do pretty well and people start to applaud, it would be uh, like the same as if that donkey that Jesus was riding thought everybody was shouting for him. <laughs> so, yeah, that, those things should inform us, right? Well, thank you so much for, I just want to thank God for you and, and just bless you, each of you. Uh, you are brothers and sisters. Uh, you, we are part of each other. And one of these days I'm going to, to teach and preach on, on that amazing mystery. That is an amazing mystery that I think that we have not really fully explored. Uh, this amazing mystery of being one with each other as God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are. I'm going to do that, and maybe in the not too distant future. So, uh, if anybody see Pastor Stan, tell him to stay away from it. If, <laughs> y'all, y'all just tell him that you know wherever he is in the world. <laughs> yeah, don't be don't be beating me, right? So, but thank you so much for your your presence here. It is not taken for granted. We really appreciate you. What we are doing around the world, and and it's beginning to happen again a little bit. We want you to know that we don't do it without you. We don't do it without you. We don't go anywhere without you. That's amazing, isn't it? You know, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so <clears throat> when uh, we go, you go. And that's what that looks like. And so we want to continue to do that and just follow the Holy Spirit. Um, I feel like I'm sort of forgetting something, but I do want you to know that uh, the Lord is opening those doors for us uh, again, uh, sort of slowly, and we want to follow the Holy Spirit and go and do whatever Jesus wants us to do. I want to thank every uh, one, uh, Brother James, uh, for you and your team for what you, you've done here. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. I mean, can you imagine uh, being called to lead God's people into worship? What an amazing privilege, and what an amazing privilege it is to sing. All of you are here. Thank all of you for that, and and then you and I, we, we sit down, we enjoy it, and and do all those things. So thank you, and thank you for our wonderful musicians. That, that, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, we, we don't have we don't we don't have to learn all that music, and we just enjoy it. And uh, they they are working on it. Thank you for that. You ushers, thank you for, for doing what you do. I mean it. So thank you, thank you, and thank you, Sister Rose. <clears throat> thank you so much for this media team and and uh, sending these signals all over the world. Uh, people don't always know your story. I talk a little bit about it and how when uh, you had Michael, little, little Michael, laying on a pallet in, in the, the studio at 2 and 3 and 4 in the morning. Uh, uh, little, little, little Michael being baptized in the Word of God, you know, yeah. Uh, and, and there and did that for years and years and years and did it because you loved Jesus, you know, because there was no money for you. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's the way this thing works. And, and, and then, uh, uh, Sister Jalita, thank you. I, I would say, man, I, I'm thinking about, you know, in my older age, when I started getting old, I'm going to. When I, when I get to that point, I'm going to write my sermons and let you preach them. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Man, sure. Yeah, thank you so much. And all of you, all of you are special. All of you are important. And uh, the Bible tells us that there's coming a day when each of us, each of you, will have praise of God. I, I don't know how, when you read scriptures like that, I don't know if y'all just keep going to the next verse. Uh, do, do you know what P-A-U-S-E means? It, it, you know, you need to pause. You need to just stay there. Can you imagine God praising us? If you if you know if you think you deserve that, that's we're gonna pray for you. I mean, God is amazing to do that, and you know, there's probably somebody think, well, I, I can understand that. Well, wow, but but that's the goodness of God. Thank you so much for that, um, and for uh, the, for the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for that because that's a a reality that's far beyond me. 
that is far beyond my understanding. And I, really, you want to be very, very careful uh, treading on some of these holy things. But coming back to the fact, I just want to just say again, appreciate all of you for, each, uh, for what you do, each of you for what you do. You're very, very important. Sometimes life beats us up so badly that we don't think we're worth anything. I mean, and if you ever felt like that, I have too. And the, the Lord has been working on me my whole life, you know, for all these years. So because I, I, don't think, I don't think I'm a doormat. I don't think that. I just think, who am I? You know, and sometimes it's debilitating uh, to just say, God, you're too good and I'm too bad. It doesn't mean you've gone out and done some of the craziest things in the world. It just means that sometimes your eyes are open. Uh, when Pastor Pert was up, he just pray. I mean, he's just praying. Yeah. Yeah. Even made me shout down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just praying. It's almost like when I was a boy, we didn't call, uh, if you had a ball, we didn't call it throwing the ball. We called it chunking it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 You know, you look at me like you never said chunk it. Now, if you, I can understand if you're from somewhere up north, you know, maybe out in California, up there in New Jersey and around. <laughs> you, oh, you chunked it up there too? Oh, chunk it. Oh, but Pastor Bird's up here praying. He's just chunking it, throwing it, you know, ambidextrous. Yeah. And East Texas, that word did not arrive when I was a boy, ambidextrous, till I left. We just said, throwing it with both hands. Even-handed, Even you know. Thank you, Pastor Burr. Just throwing those prayers out. He was talking about this drought, and the, I don't know. I, he said some things about drought, and I, I shook my head. And what did he say about the drought? And he was. Uh, <laughs> but one thing about the drought, you know, we, we we said God told us we were living in a time of reset and revealing, and one of the things. That, you know, we, we say, oh, we hate the drought, Lord, send the rains, Lord. And uh, well, one of the things, th this whole era that we have entered into uh, is uh, a, a, a one of revealing. And uh, Lake Mead, the drought, has caused us to know there was a lot of bad stuff going on. But the water was covering it. And now we found, find people in barrels, and boats and stuff. You know, we're living in a time of, of revealing. So we, what we want to do, we want God to be revealed and not crazy stuff, right? So, th so let's keep praying and going for, the, going for it. Now, <clears throat> my time is about to start now. <laughs> so so I, I would like to keep talking to you about, uh, from the subject, can I be like Jesus? So important to ask ourselves some questions. Do you ever ask yourself questions? If I were... Uh, my own teacher, I think I would not, and when I was a young boy, I would ask myself easy questions, but now I would ask myself hard questions. And I think that this may, be seeming, uh, may seem like an easy question, but it's a tough question. Can I be like Jesus? And a lot of people would say, no, 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 you can't. And some would say, sure, but not really knowing fully what that means. And so I want us to ask the question, can I be like Jesus, not be too glib, uh, with the answer, but to walk in, in reality, in the reality of God. When you think about who Jesus is, and I always say, Lord, who you are, and I sometimes uh, don't stop to talk about who he is. And, and so now I also tell these people they can't talk about who he is until I get back from my next trip. But who he is, he is, Jesus is king of kings. And, and that, that's huge. It's one thing to be king of subjects, but he is king of kings, which means if there is a king, he's super, far above. He's king of kings. <clears throat> and you think about kings, you think about conquerors, you think about rulers, but Jesus is greater than, than any conqueror. He is greater than any ruler. And he is Lord, master of lords. So those people who think they are something, he says, no, I'm above you even. So that's who Jesus is. Can I be like Jesus? And we think about that. We don't want to ever take a truth to absurdity. Are you still with me? We don't want to take a truth to absurd, absurdity. We don't want to take it to the illogical. We want to bring it to its logical place. That is the place that God always intended it. And so we say he is Lord of lords.
minutes. So those are very lofty things about God, about Jesus. And you and I have been called into this amazing fellowship of God, this fellowship of God. And then we can say the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. We've been called into the fellowship. And we want to be careful because when these truths are so precious, Jesus tells us that we don't give that which is holy to the dogs, nor do we cast our pearls among swine. So you don't want to just take these amazing truths and just start to glib this so people will think you're deep because we'll show that we're shallow if we're not careful. And so... This amazing, beautiful thing that says that God has brought us into fellowship. And I I like to talk about fellowshipping with what you're like. You cannot fellowship. It's like Sister Kemp used to teach us years ago. She said they're like fellows in a ship. Like you got the same ship. And there's fellows in the ship. Are you still with me? So then that's who Jesus is. He's brought us into that. He's Lord of Lords, Master of Masters. He masters the masters. He is the Savior of the world. And what, when you think about the Savior of the world, I don't think you can just say that and then move on to the next point until you realize that the, the world was in total darkness, pitch darkness. Yeah. Growing up in the city, as many of you have grown up, you may not have understood pitch darkness you know you you've always had some light a street light a house light but when uh, I was a boy and the cows would get out and dad would say we got to go get the cows and we had to go down into the pasture to get the cows uh, it, that was pitch black and you could not see your hand in front of your face and I remembered every gobbling story it was ever told And we're out there. He is savior of a world that was in total darkness. No light. Didn't know who God was. Didn't know where God was. Could not find him. If, if, if they had, he, it could have somehow heard a voice. He is savior of that. And that's who we were. All of us were born in sin. All of us were born in sin. And so he's savior of the world. Then he is, he is the redeemer of of that, of that mankind, is redeemer of mankind. That means he saved us literally what we could not be saved from. When you think about Jesus, it's not just, oh, Jesus, Jesus, you know, it's, it, this is big. To say Jesus that was, uh, is, is huge. I was thinking, I've been thinking a number of times when I was thinking about um, uh, Jesus and who he is and what he brings, and I was asking, why don't we call Jesus Mr. Jesus? Am I the weirdest person in the room? You know, you know, man. So, you know, I'm thinking, you know, let's put a handle on it. When I was a boy, you couldn't come up to somebody who was 21 or older, maybe 25 or so. You couldn't come up to them and just call them by the first name. We don't think anything's wrong with that. Well, well, I grew up in an era where that was disrespectful. You had to put a handle on it. You were Mr. Somebody when you were old enough to be my mom or uh, my daddy. And if you were my grandparents, no self-respecting person would let a child go up to an adult and call them by their first name. We've lost some things. We've lost some things. And so I always wonder, why why don't we call him Mr. Jesus or Sir Jesus or whatever? Uh, And it, it just occurred to me because you don't have to put a handle on what is already the handle. You don't have to do it. Yeah. Jesus is so amazing. And so I want us to really give him all the respect. And so when we ask, can we be like him, the prince of peace? You know, peace had no uh, uh, entrance into who we are and what we are, except he is the author of it. it. It had no being, as it were, without him. And Jesus is the author of it. He is the originator of peace. Not just original. He's the originator of peace. He's, he's almighty God. And there's so much more we can say about it. Maybe we ought to just all someday explore it. Bring us a, a whole back sack lunch of who he is. So when we ask, can I be like him? And then we have to ask ourselves, what are we talking about? So how then can we be like Jesus, we can be like Jesus in character and attitude. 
He has impeccable character. And he has the best attitudes. Why is it that the enemy is always t- trying to get us off in the area of character and attitude? Because those are the areas that, where we can be like Jesus. I, I will never be king of kings. I can be a king. You know, I, I, I can never be uh, lord of lords, but I could be a master of things. And so, but how is it that he's always coming against us? Because he comes against us in the areas where we can be like Jesus. And we can radiate who he is. This is amazing. And so we must allow the Holy Spirit by yielding always so that we might even think like Jesus. And Sister Martha always pays me a huge compliment. And, and, and I always, you know, she's just been wonderful through the years in that. And sometimes she says, I, I'm embarrassed. She'll say something so nice. I go, no, man, don't do that. But she will always say, who thinks like that? The things you say, who thinks like that? And I'm saying, well, this is how you think like Jesus is when you get, as it were, so involved in who he is and what he has brought to you. Uh, There's a word that's trying to, to escape me when I'm, as it were, baptized into his thought process. And, and by reading the Word of God and then meditating on it, sometimes when you read the Word of God, for example, you read something, let me say, behold what manner of, of love the Father has bestowed upon us. You're reading that, just go to the next verse. No, no, behold. That means I need to stop and look at it, engage at it, and think about it. And now what? And then let, me, let me see what the what is there for. You know, and then manner, what kind, what kind. So there may be a multiplicity of, uh, of, of kinds, as it were. And then, and then you, you, you just start, you, go to, you get to a place, you say, wow, wow. And you realize that the universe being what it is, and this one being walked around in sandals around Israel and Jerusalem, and Judea and Samaria and all those places, and he made all that. You know, and you start to think about him, and then, then thoughts start coming to you, and and then after a while, they start coming out of you. Yes. You know, it's amazing. Amen. Can I be like Jesus? I cannot be king of kings. I cannot be Lord of Lords, I am not the Redeemer. I am not El Salvador, and I'm not the Savior. But I can sure think like him. So what I can bring, I want to bring. I can think like him. Scripture says concerning us, as he is, so are we in this world. And so God then has spoken something that is impossible but he's made it possible. So as Christ is, as Jesus is, as so are we here. Amen. So in the here and now, we can be like Jesus. Amen. Now, the question is, are we willing? And now I ask these questions because I'm not angry or anything like that. I tend to be intense. My wife always, who's not here, and pray for her. She, she would like that. But she's always trying to temper me because I'm so intense <laughs> you know, most of the time uh, or much of the time. But the thing is, in the areas where we can be like the Lord, let's be like the Lord and let's think like the Lord. If we can have God thoughts, then let's work on that and, and think like God. And knowing that he has said as he is, so are we. And it's not like that's a God wish. There's no such thing. And so in God speak, we can be like him. And he speaks as, it, as though it is a conclusion, which it is in, in God economy. It's an, a conclusion. As he is, so will we be, so are we. So are we. In this world. 
So he is meek and he's lowly. So I can also be meek and lowly. Now notice all the things that we are the areas in which we can be like Jesus. They cost us something. (laughs) Who wants to be meek and lowly and get walked on? Mistreated. So we'll say, well, I know God didn't want me to go through that. You really? I mean, listen, you're talking about the God who gave his son into the hand of sinners. Uh, I I wish I had a couple hours to just preach with them. But remember the story when David was, uh, he conquered his enemies. He was doing extraordinarily well. David was a shepherd, uh, a shepherd boy uh, who uh, was tending sheep. Uh, You know the story about Samuel coming to anoint a king from Jesse's house, and Jesse, daddy, daddy Jesse, dad didn't even think enough of him to bring him to the anointing service. Now, if that won't give you a complex, (laughs) and and, and this young man, this young boy uh, is the one that, uh, I love to tell the story, but he's the young, he's the, the, the person who wasn't invited to the uh, the anointing service, and when he was invited to the anointing service, he was to be the anointed. And that's big. So sometime when you're not invited, don't worry about it. You just be, be like Jesus and be like, you know. He, he came and he was the one. And so uh, then God took him from following sheep to shepherd Israel, and he's shepherding Israel, and now he's been very, very successful. He's come from nothing to something. And he is very, very powerful, and he decides, he got beside himself, and he decided to number Israel. Well, in in that story, in that story where he uh, 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 numbered uh, Israel, he got haughty and wanted to know where his power had come from. Now, listen, you have to be careful about that. We are living in a day where God wants to do something special to the church, but when we become something, We have to be careful lest we become nothing. And what happened with David, he became so big in his own eyes. Now, uh, he wanted to know where his power had come from. He should have asked himself, where was my power when uh, daddy had forgotten me? And and God put it in the words of the prophet to ask, don't you have anybody else? (laughs) David did not bring that about. So you don't have to bring about your own success. You have to walk in what God is calling you. We don't like being lowly. Amen. We don't like being lowly. We fight, be, we fight the things that make us more like Jesus. We fight the character building. It, it's the, Paul tells us that if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. And we don't like suffering with him. We want to reign with him. That's, that's sometimes from the carnal nature. We want to reign with him, but we don't want to suffer. And Jesus said he was meek and lowly. He was pushed aside. It was maltreated. And so what we are uh, are faced with as the church of Jesus Christ, the enemy wants to take control of us. But as the church of Jesus Christ, we have to ask ourselves, what does that look like walking in meekness and lowliness? It really is walking in a way that the world despises. And so sometimes we despise it too. And so can I be like Jesus? Yeah, I can be. Low, meek and lowly. And listen, he's harmless. He's harmless. We don't like being harmless because when we look harmless, then the world attacks us, right? And so we don't want to look harmless. We don't want to be harmless. Jesus, the Bible says, a bruised reed, he will not break. And smoking flax, he will not quench. But Jesus then tells us in Luke six forty, he says, the disciple is not above his teacher. So you, you know, you don't, you can't ever get above if you're always being lowly and meek. You know, so what we want to do is be like Jesus because that's what the world needs. The world needs the antithesis of itself. You can't be, you can't be almost opposite. <laughs> you know, you are, I, you're opposite or you're not opposite. And so antithesis speaks of opposite. I am like 180 degrees. 
I'm like this. Two points don't meet. I'm not like this because we're going to eventually meet. So antithesis speaks of that. So uh, the challenge for all of us is to be the antithesis of the world. I want to say this because there's so many who will hear these words and go out and forget antithesis. They will forget opposite. They will, they will forget polar opposite. You can't do that and really change the world. I remember as a, as a younger man, uh, as a younger man, my pastor saying to us, you cannot win the world being like the world. You cannot change the world being like the world. But we find things in the world that we think are worthy of the kingdom. We often do that. You remember the story of, of, of Achan when Israel had come to, to um, Jericho. Thank you so much. They come to Jericho and the, got the word that everything in Jericho was devoted for destruction. It was supposed to be destroyed. And old Achan got some of the Babylonian garments and he got some wedges, I think, of silver and gold. And, and he thought they were worthy. And sometimes we find things that are in the world system, we think that they are worthy. And this is what God is speaking to. He is speaking to that in his church. He says, come out. What, what about my, the, you know, I, I sometimes quote my wife. She's, she, she sometimes makes me laugh when, when she's not talking about me about these things. But, <laughs> but she'll, she'll say something like, no, what part of out don't you understand? You know, you know come out from. That, that sounds almost like an East Texasism, right? Come out. Now, you think that's all we ready from, but, I, but come out from them and be separate. So God is saying something to the church that we must adhere to. We must learn it. So if, if my generation, and when I say my generation, I don't mean there weren't people in my generation that understood this, but we weren't fully like that. There just weren't. A, a, an overwhelming body of us like that because we came out of the world but we brought some things from the world and so I, I really believe that God is speaking to us uh, I was talking about this being a time of reset and revealing and earlier where in Lake Mead they found people in barrels and other stuff and and they thought that it was covered. Their sin was covered, but it was exposed. So this time is a time of exposure. Let us walk in the truth of God as we have never. And let us see it um, as our duty, our obligation. Let us see it as something that God really wants us to do. And we're going to give God. Amen. Okay? Amen. So a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained can be like his teacher. You can be like Jesus. So everybody who's a real student of the Lord, a student of the word, a disciple can be like Jesus. You can never be above over Jesus. You can never outdo Jesus in place or any other thing. And when you're perfectly trained, that means that you've been prepared and restored and brought to what God wants. In John, in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 2, he says, behold what manner of or what sort of love the Father has bestowed, gifted, granted to us, that we should be called children of God, technon, those who are produced by God. He says, and so John says, because we have been produced by God, because we have been brought forth by God. You ever think about the, the beauty of being brought forth by God? Do you ever think about uh, being born of, uh, of your mom, your mom, and, and father responsible for bringing you into the world and you are brought into the world and now you have been produced by human, a human being or human beings. You are flesh, right? And so God looked at that and that was not good enough. So God says, okay, I'm going to do something uh, to them that will totally metamorphose them. It, it, it will totally change them from who, who they were. I'm going to cause each of them to be born of my spirit, of my substance. That's why God is our daddy, our father. God says, okay, I'm going to bring you forth. I'm going to bring you forth through believing in Jesus Christ. And so now uh, Jesus is talking to the ruler, uh, a ruler, a, uh, uh, Nicodemus of the Jews, the, a teacher of the teachers of the Jews. He is like the master teacher, right? And so he says, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Right? Comes from is. But that which is born of the Spirit is. 
spirit. And so what God, Jesus is wanting us to understand is that we are a new humanity. Now, I, don't, I know that we don't seem to grasp it. Why? Because we go to the next thing too quickly. Now, that which is born of the Spirit. So we always talk about our natural birth or, or our race or our, our, natu- our nationality, our race, our ethnic group, and all these natural things. Well, we love to boast in it. I don't boast in it. Am I ashamed of it? Absolutely not. I don't boast in it. Why? Because it's flesh. It's perishable. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for not stopping at at four children. (laughs) I mean, I'm grateful for that. (laughs) You know, but but no, but that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And God wants us to understand it. So, So John tells us, that this is the kind of love that God bestowed, gifted us with. He says, therefore, the world does not know us. Why? Because the world is flesh. We are spirit. And there came, there's not supposed to be any intersection with that. So we are, we are spirit. The world is, is fleshly. And, and they just don't grasp us until, unless we act like we're flesh. That's the only time there's interaction. God has called us to something that is much greater than we have understood and known. I'm telling you, we need to walk in it. I, I, I just want some, some people who will just walk with me in it. They're going to walk with me in it. Now, listen to what he says. He says, because of that, because we have been born of God, because we are called children of God, he doesn't mean that God is miscalling us. He's not miscalling us. Uh, uh, I remember uh, I was introduced to the word misnomer, you know, and, and that's a, pretty good word misnomer something that is not really named as it should be i think that's kind of that's a simple way of defining it something that's not properly named but we, we are properly named when we are called children of god that's technon that's properly named children of god uh, so i'm not as it were a, a child of orlean yes in the world sphere but in the kingdom i'm known as not a child of Orlean and Lina. I am a child of God. That's why. And my mother is the new Jerusalem. I said my mother is the new Jerusalem. I wish I had somebody. Hallelujah. That's who I am. Therefore the world does not know us. And, and so John brings in his proof because he has to bring in witnesses. And, and I love to pray with witnesses. And, and Pastor, I, I want to thank you for, 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 for praying with witnesses. We've, we've come up together. When, you, when you're praying and you're talking to God and you're preaching, you want to look in the Bible and find you some witnesses. You, you, you got to find some witnesses. I don't want to just tell you what I think. I want to go back and see what Moses thought. Uh, Moses, can you witness with me? I want to find, find out, uh, uh, Joshua, can you witness? I want to find out, Isaiah, can you, be, can you come here and testify? You know, that's how we want to preach. And that's how we want to teach. That's how we want to live. Amen. The world does not know us. And, and so uh, there are too many of us who are trying to, to be known by the world. Trying to know, be known by the world. I'm, I'm coming into home plate. I think I'm still rounding second, though. <laughs> I got my eye on home. <laughs> I just feel like shouting. <laughs> I do. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so there's been wrong teaching because men of our teachers, they didn't mean to do it. I, I don't want you to ever think I think they were intentional. But they have been telling us, and, and so, some dignitary told me recently uh, that we were, I met him, uh, is one of our uh, uh, leaders, governmental leaders uh, uh, from uh, Washington, D.C. that represents us, and, and we were talking. And this, this is a believer, and they, they, I guess my reputation has preceded me. And so he told me 
Are y'all going to be all right? <laughs> he told me, he started to tell me about the good that's in the world system. And I said, we have but one duty, and that is to follow Jesus. Amen. Whatever Jesus says is what we're to do. We are his people. We're the sheep of his pasture. He died for us. We have no other obligation but to do what Jesus says. John says, the world doesn't know us. My concern is that the world knows too many of us. And this is what, what, what we are. See, we're in a particular time period in, human, in, our, in our history, in our salvation history. Uh, we're in this particular time period where God wants to do something. I, 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 I'm not trying to change your program, uh, 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 Brother James, but you know that song that we always sing sometimes, God is doing something right now? I mean, I'm always singing that. And, and other songs that you sing here, because we're in this, pl this pl uh, place where God is doing something, and we don't seem to grasp it, so God is calling up as that... Uh, uh, that old pre a young preacher said to me one time, he says, if we don't do the work of God, he says, he was from Alabama and he was over in Kingsville, Texas, uh, pastoring a church here. And he said, if we don't obey God, God's going to bring some old boy uh, with his butcher legs rolled up, he said. You know, and I so sure hope I don't resemble that. I really hope. I don't want to resemble that. But this is what he says. There are too many of us who are really still connected. So uh, I think that, God is saying, I know that God is saying, come out from among them. Why? Because John says the world doesn't know us. And why it doesn't it know us? He said because it did not know our producer. It did not know him. It did not know the one who brought us forth. So if, it, if, he does not, if the world does not know the one who brought us forth, it does not know that one's children. I, I don't want to be known by the world. I'm trying to get around third. If the world hates you, so he's giving comfort to the children of God. He says, the world hates you. You know, not you wonder. You know that it hated me before it hated you. Why? And, and it proves that you belong to me. This is big stuff. Now, I think I should stop. One more. I, I would not do that except it was such a commanding voice. I'll do one more. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to read it a little fast. If you'll allow me, I'll come back to it at some juncture. But all these things they will do to you. That means persecuting you, not like you, hate you. You've got a bigger problem when you're loved by this world system than those of us who are hated by it. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. John 16, 1 through 4. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things they will do because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things now, they have not known the Father me. And this is what Jesus is doing. Jesus is talking about not just Romans. He's not talking. He's talking about Pharisees. And Sadducees. So I want to prepare you. We've come into something. We've come into something. But these things I've told you. That when the time comes. You may remember that I told you of them. I'm, I'm somewhat mystified. And this is not a, a strong rebuke. This is a gentle one. I'm shocked sometimes. When I've said something. 50 times. Sometimes I shouted. I did everything but do like the old preachers, uh, uh, Reverend Rochelle Roots, when I was a boy, when they would do this and wear it back. 
I did everything but that. And somebody said, I never heard that before. Jesus says, I'm talking to you about this so you'll remember when it happens. Some of us have no real memory. Beloved, I'm coming, I'm, I'm, I just rounded third. Beloved, now we are children of God. <laughs> and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, and that could take a whole s seminar. When he is revealed, we shall be like him. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we must, we must have this revelation of Jesus. And we can't be like the world or be like, please, fancy churches even. Because when he is revealed, it doesn't just mean eschatologically. Just when the clouds come open. Yes, it does mean that. But that's not the only meaning here. When he is revealed here. We shall be like him. Listen. For when he's revealed, we shall see him as he is. You, you, whenever he's revealed, uncovered, we shall see him like he is. And then the Bible says, and we're going to be like him. When, we, when he's revealed in our midst, we will be like him. We're going to see the one who produced us, brought us forth. And we're going to see, ah, I look just like him. I walk just like him. I think like him. We shall see him as he is. Amen. Thank you for your word. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now, right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now, right now. Amen. 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 Wow. That was great. I want to thank all of you. Thank you. Thank you for what you bring. Thank you for what you do. And you're like a, a clean vessel, you know. I'm, I can be very finicky. Let me just say I am very finicky. 
forgive me if that's ever offensive. I like to drink clean water from a clean glass. And if, if this looks dirty, I, I don't want it. And what God wants to do with all of us, not just you, all of you, but God wants clean vessels. Because His Spirit flows through clean vessels. This is what God wants to do. I, I, could, I could add some things, but I don't want to do that now. You've been so gracious with your time. But if there's anybody here who wants to give his or her life to Jesus tonight, you have not done that. I want you to, to come up. These, these elders are standing here. And you can come to one of them and say, I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ. And, and, they, and, and is there anybody here? Wave at me. Anybody like that? Want to, if you do. Now, if there's somebody who said, you know, I'm really convicted and I want to just say something to the Lord. I want somebody to touch me and, and I want to, to just recommit myself to Jesus. You can come to one of them as well. And if, and if more of you come, they, they'll, others will come and pray with you. You can do that. Just want to give it just a second and then we're going to go. We'll, we'll leave tonight. I'm so glad to have been with you. Uh, yes. I'm so glad to have been with you. Uh, this is good. God is doing something. I feel like the old preacher who said, you know, when I talk about old preachers, I'm not trying to be cute. I, I don't see myself as old yet. But uh, when you take, when you take uh, 2022 and subtract 1947, uh, that's kind of old. But this old preacher once, it, it was really beautiful. He shouted out to the Lord, the Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. And that's how I want to live. I want you to live like that. The Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. I want to be with you. How many of you have had big brothers growing up? Anybody have a big brother? Yeah. You know, I always wanted to go with my big brothers. Man, I wanted to go and see what was going on. And that's how it is with Jesus. Let's want to go with him wherever he goes, okay? Now, we've given them a little time to pray, and I want us now to lift up our hands and let's bless each other. Let's bless each other by saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Amen. Go with God, everybody. Go with God, everybody.